Hi, MMS. Uh, this is Chapter 3, Lesson 6. Uh, our topic today is uh, estimate. How do you estimate quotients? Uh, again, you're going to need a note page. You'll need this or a comp, a comp book if that's how you're taking notes. Uh, something else that might help you today is your multiplication table. Um, this could come in handy for a lot of the work you're going to do today as well. Uh, before we get started, I just want to look at our topic a little bit closer. The word estimate means we're not solving exact for exact answers today. So I'm going to put a little double wavy line next to estimate, uh, meaning that your answers are going to be about um, close to the exact answer, but not the exact answer. And the word quotient, uh, when I read quotient, that tells me that we are going to be working with division. Quotient is an answer to a division problem, so this makes me think dividing. Um, okay, let's get started. The first thing we're going to talk about uh, are the idea of compatible numbers. Uh, compatible number, that's what you're going to be doing today is changing dividends and divisors so that you can uh, get make those compatible numbers so that you can make quick estimates with division problems. That's what you're going to be doing today. Uh, the idea of compatible numbers is that they are numbers compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to divide mentally. Okay, that's what you're going to be working on today is how can I change uh, either the dividend or the divisor or both so that I can get a quick mental estimate. Okay, the first example we are going to look at is estimate the quotient of 11.75 divided by 3. So in this example, we are going to we are going to round the dividend. Okay, and remember that if I have 11.75 divided by 3, I could also rewrite that. How many 3's go into 11.75? And the dividend is this number. So for this example, 3 is a, an easy whole number to work with. I'm going to change 11.75. I'm going to think, what is the nearest uh, multiple of 3 that I can get to 11.75? So if you can do that mental math, great. But another thing you might want to do is look at this. Look at your 3 row and see, well, how close can I get to 11.75? And your estimate using compatible numbers would be how many threes fit into 12. 11.75 is really close to 12. So in this example we would round 11.75 to 12 and then answer this question. How many threes fit into 12 or 12 divided by 3? And the answer is 4. So your answer would be about 4, or you could use the double wavy lines. So that would be your estimate for 11.75 divided by 3. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is, oh, by the way, 
this, rounding the dividend, these are, if it says in your book, examples uh, one and two. So if it says example one or two, it could be, you should look at rounding the dividend. And I'm going to highlight those orange because in your book, uh, on your practice problems, it's that little orange text next to the number that says example. Okay, next one. Estimate thirty-two divided by three point eight, and this time. This time, we are going to round the divisor, and I'm going to separate our examples right here. So, the divisor is this number. It's the number that's being divided into the dividend. And again, I could rewrite this. this, how many times does 3.8 divide into 32? So we are going to round the divisor. So in this example, I'm going to round the divisor to the closest factor of 32. So I'm thinking, how can I make 32? What's the closest number I can get that's a factor of 32? Again, I could use my multiplication table. Um, and in doing so, I would find that 32, one way that you can make 32 is 4 times 8, and 3.8 is really close to 4. So I would rewrite this using my compatible numbers. What's compatible to 3.8 and 32 is changing 3.8 into 4. How many times does 4 go into 32? The answer is about 8. So my answer would be about 8. And in your book, these are examples 3 and 4. So when you see examples 3 and 4 in your book, be thinking of rounding the divisor. Okay, last example. We've looked at rounding the dividend. We've looked at rounding the divisor. And you might be able to guess what's next. Uh, the next estimate is where we would look at rounding both the dividend and the divisor. So estimate the quotient of Thirty-four point nine point ninety divided by five point seven five, and this time we are going to round both. We are going to round the divisor and dividend. So the divisor, again, is this number. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. I wanted that to be pink, so it matched here. The divisor is this number. And the dividend is this number. So this time I wrote it backwards and I could write it, change it into this kind of a division problem by rewriting it like this. 
34.90 divided by 5.75. And here's our divisor. This should have been pink. Now it looks kind of funny. And our dividend. I think it's easier to work with the divisor first. So what whole number is this close to? That is close to 6. And then use that 6 to think, well, what factor? 6 is a factor that's close to what number that's close to 34.9? So again, I could count by sixes, look at my multiplication table, and I would see that the closest I can get is 36. So now I've got some compatible numbers. 36 divided by six, and the answer or the estimate for 34.90 divided by 5.75 the estimate would be that is going to be about 6. And again, dividend and divisor. These are compatible numbers here. Compatible, compatible, easy numbers to work with in your head and we are rounding the dividend, the divisor, or both to make compatible numbers and make a quick estimate of quotients. That is lesson six, estimating quotients. Uh, the hidden treasure for today is solving this problem right here. I'll hold it up. So for this problem, we're looking at Halloween candy that two kids have left. Sam has eight Reese's left out of 72 total candies, and Carson has six Reese's left out of a total of 54 candies. The question, the uh, hidden treasure question slash puzzle is, who has the higher ratio of Reese's candy left? And explain. So, um, Who's got the higher ratio of Reese's, either Sam or Carson? And explain your answer. Lots of ways you could do it, but that is today's hidden treasure puzzle. Okay, um, I will see you soon for Chapter 3, Lesson 7.